says we are now live. Hope everybody's had a great Wednesday. We are damn near third of the way into September. The time is going by. Hopefully we're making the most of it. Everybody who is checking in right now, let's get to what we need to get to as y'all are checking in. Go ahead, leave a comment, shout yourself out in the comment section. Let's get right into it. We're talking power strategy today. We ain't gonna waste too much time. We got things that we need to get to. I'll make sure I give you Make sure I give you money's worth for every minute that I take here today. So as y'all checking in, again, shout yourself out in the comment section. I got Facebook live on my left. My Facebook is slash work on your game. That's my business page. And Instagram on my right. You already know Instagram. If you're on here, that's at Dre Baldwin. I'm going to give everybody like 30 seconds to get to check themselves in. Get yourself, get yourself ready. Get your popcorn ready. And then turn your volume up. And then we're getting right into this material. I'm going to get right to it. But whoever's here is here. Whoever missed it, they just missed it. They can catch the replay, however. So, hope everybody's had a great Wednesday. Staying focused, uh, doing what you got to do in this last, we're in the last trimester of 2020. If we break it up in the third, September, October, November, December. What's going on, Love Alexis? As y'all are checking in, again, shout yourself out. I'm getting started in 10 seconds. I don't care who's in here. In 10 seconds, we're getting started. So, whoever ain't here, send them a text. Let them know. If there's noise in the room, tell them to be quiet, and we get into it. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, former nine-year professional athlete, author of 27 books. I've done four TED Talks. I created this whole philosophy, this brand, this business that is all about, it's called work on your game. It's all about taking the mental tools necessary to succeed in sports and teaching how those tools apply to business and life. That's what I do here every single day. So whether the topic is sports, whether it's entrepreneurship, whether it's business, whether it's uh, something that's going on, current events, politics, race, whatever, social unrest, we talk about whatever. I will talk about any topic. I don't care what it is. I don't care who gets offended. Today's topic, I probably won't offend anybody because the topic is the power of strategy. And I think everybody, no matter who you like, no matter what party you vote for, no matter what you think about anything that's going on in the world, no matter who your favorite basketball team is, you think you would probably agree that strategy would help you do your thing. So as you are checking in here, you he said, I spent most of my time in high school watching your videos. I appreciate that. Alexis said, love your books and your videos. You kept me motivated and striving to be great. That's what's up. Well, I hope you actually are, are getting there to that greatness, even going further than striving for it. But what we're talking about here today is the power of strategy. Let me give you a definition of strategy. And I want to make sure everybody who's listening and you're trying to decide, should I listen to this or should I not? I'm going to sell you on why you need to hear this topic. Definition of strategy is a plan of action or policy designed to achieve a major overall aim. If you are listening to me right now, you probably have something you want to achieve in life. Does anybody listen to me who has no goals, nothing you want to achieve, nothing that you want to do? I think everybody listening to me, there's something that you want. And I'm talking about something long term. I'm not talking about uh, you want something to eat because you're hungry right now. You need something to drink because it's hot. I'm talking about a long term goal. Maybe you're trying to get a certain job. You're trying to get your business to a certain point. You want to get in shape and be able to lift a certain amount of weight. Maybe you're trying to lose weight. Maybe you want to have a family. Maybe you want to retire. Something that you want to do that's going to take some long term, some long term vision. Strategy is what you're going to need in doing this and what a lot of people fail to do in life. If, because when I come across people who are either asking me a question about a challenge that they have or if I'm talking to them and they end up presenting some type of challenge or problem that they have. And we all have some type of challenge or problem at all times, always in life. Nobody's life is ever all perfect all the way around all at the same time. Nobody, because we're human. And I talked about that yesterday. Usually what I find is when people are having challenges in certain areas of their lives is because there is no strategy in place. They don't have a strategy for what they are doing, which explains why they're having challenges because they're running into an issue and they don't have, an, they don't have, any, they don't have any alternatives to how they can handle the situation. Maybe something was working perfectly while they were doing it this way, but then for whatever reason, they can't do it that way anymore. They didn't have a strategy for what they could do next. They didn't have a strategy for how they can pivot and change direction and still keep going where they're trying to get to without having to just revamp everything and stop for a minute, which halts their momentum, which slows them down from getting to where they want to get to. So everyone who's listening to me right now, if you cannot lay out clearly what your strategy is for the goals that matter the most to you in your life, you need to listen to what I'm about to say because I'm going to sell you on the concept of strategy. And then the next step is going to be you actually making and implementing a strategy. So the first step is you got to understand the value of it. Then the next step is you actually doing something about your understanding. But if you don't understand, you won't do anything. So this is step one. You got to understand it. So first is understanding. Then is 
doing, then it's coming up with the use of the thing you understand. Then it's actually doing the thing that you came up with. Everybody understand it. Then the last step is actually getting the result. So step one, we got to get the understanding down. So today we're going to talk about why strategy matters so much, no matter who you are, no matter what you do. Number one point, strategy allows you to see your finish line. Now, everyone here who is whatever goal that you have, you got some long term goal. Let's say you want to play in the NBA or you want to have a business that makes a, a billion dollars in revenue every single year. You have the long term goal that you wish, wish to achieve. Maybe you can see that as your finish line. But the question is, what's the bridge between where you are today and the finish line you want to get to tomorrow or next week or 10 years from now? How are you going to get from here where you are now to there? How are you going to get from playing in high school, sitting on a bench to playing in the NBA? How are you going to get from a business that's pre-revenue? Y'all know what that means. That means you haven't sold anything yet to a business that's making a billion dollars. It's not impossible. Every business has done it. Every business started. Elon Musk started at zero. Apple, Steve Jobs started at zero. Microsoft started at zero. Every company, ESPN started at zero. Then they start making money. Every company has done it. So the question is, what is the strategy for you to actually get there? What is the next thing you need to do? What happens after that? What happens after that? What happens after that? And this does not mean that you are necessarily you know, predicting the future like some kind of psychic because we all can't do that. And we don't know what's going to happen a year from now, five, 10 years from now. But what is your strategy? Meaning, no matter what happens next year, this is the thing that we are looking at. Here's our next step. Our next step is this, then is this, then is this. So that's what a strategy is. It's a bridge between where you are now and where you want to get to. Now, everybody here knows what a bridge is, right? Everybody here has crossed the bridge, whether by foot or in a car. You've crossed the bridge. It takes you over, usually over a body of water. Usually that's why we have bridges, right? So with a bridge... You can see each step that you need to take to get from this point. You know what happens on the other side of the bridge. Now you're going to be in, for example, in Miami. We got bridges from the city of Miami, where I'm at, to Miami Beach. There's a bridge that crosses a big body of water. And you can see every single step along that bridge, whether you're taking it on a car. I run across that bridge. I rode a bike across that bridge. But it's step by step in order to get to the other side. What are your steps? A good strategy will always tell you what the steps are. The problem that many people have is that they begin doing something as a means to an end. They start doing something as if, all right, I'm going to do this so I can get to the other side of the bridge. The problem is they don't lay out their steps. They don't lay out a strategy. So before they know it, they look up later and they're still doing the same thing, like supposedly crossing a bridge, but they're, they don't even know where the other side of the bridge is at. I'll give you an example. A woman might, for example, say, you know, I need to pay for school. So she might go become a, a dancer in a club. She might become a stripper so she can pay for school. And she said, all right, I'm going to strip for these four years so I can go to college, get my degree. Then when I get my degree, I get out of stripping. I only did that temporarily so I can move on with the rest of my life. I want to be a, a real estate agent or start my own finance company. Cool. That's the strategy. That's her. Or she thought it was a strategy. The problem is she didn't map out how exactly she's going to do that, how she's going to put money away, how she's going to make sure that she can focus on her studies despite the fact that she's working all night. How is she going to do this thing and this thing and this thing? She didn't strategize it. So then what happens is five years later, she looks up. She's still working at the club, still stripping, making money, but she's not in school anymore. She doesn't have any plans to get out of the stripping game because she hasn't decided how she's actually going to do it. She's so deep in the game that she can't even get out. So what happens is the stripping was a means to an end. The problem was she never got to the actual end because she didn't strategize for the end. So some people start things and say, All right, I'm just going to do this in order for me to do that. But they never make a plan for how they can get from this to that. So then they keep doing this, the first thing, and they just do it forever as if it's the end when it was supposed to only be a means to the end. Everybody understand what I'm saying? It's like you get in a car. Any of you ever get in a car or on a train or on an airplane? The reason you get in those vehicles is so it can take you from one place to another place, right? It's supposed to take you somewhere. It's like if you get in an airplane, you know where the flight is going. You get in an airplane at Fort Lauderdale, you're going to fly to Denver. That's where the plane is supposed to stop. But what if the plane just keeps flying? Right? It doesn't never stop. It just keeps going. All right, we, we just going to keep flying. We don't know when this flight's going to end. Now that's, that's not a good thing. Because first of all, you're not going to get to where you want to go on time. Second of all, that plane is going to run out of gas somewhere. And hopefully it's not over top of an ocean. Actually, maybe that would be good. Maybe hopefully it's not on top of some mountains. Because that'll be, you probably ain't going to survive that one. So you got to know where you're going. An airplane always knows where it's starting, where it's stopping, how long it's going to take. Like any of y'all been on a plane before, you'll know. They tell you. This is what time the flight leaves. This is at an exact time. It'll be like 9.27 a.m. And it's going to land at 11.36 
a.m. It tells you exactly how long it's going to take. Now, it's not always exactly like that. Sometimes there are delays. Sometimes it's faster. Sometimes a little bit slower. But it has a strategy. We are going to go from here to here. If there's a layover, they'll say, all right, we're leaving Tampa. We're going to stop in Dallas. It's going to be a two-hour layover. Then it's going from Dallas to Seattle. And then it's going to sit there for an hour. Then it's flying from Seattle back to Chicago. They tell you what the exact strategy is and it's all planned out point by point, minute by minute. Now, ask yourself. How, how much of your life is strategized in that way? How many pieces of your life are strategized point by point, minute by minute? Now, again, let me be clear. This doesn't mean it is always going to work out. Any of you ever been on a plane and the flight got delayed? Any of you ever went to the airport and maybe your flight got canceled? Maybe you had to get on the plane the next day. Maybe you had to stay in the city a day longer because it was a storm or something was wrong with the plane. That's happened to all of us, right, at different times. However, there was a strategy in place. Hey, this is what we are going to be doing. So when it didn't work, they came up with a contingency plan. What do they say? Ladies and gentlemen, this flight is going to be canceled. Everybody's going to deboard the plane. You go to the ticket counter and we're going to get everybody on the next flight to go wherever you need to go. We're going to give you a free hotel room. We'll give you a voucher for the next flight. They have a strategy. They have contingency plans for when the main strategy didn't work out. Do you have contingency plans for when your main strategy doesn't work out? If you don't, then you need to keep strategizing. You need to start strategizing because you actually haven't done it yet. <clears throat> when you have a strategy, ladies and gentlemen, you know when to start and you know when to stop. Point number two. And if it's not working, you know that it is not working. That's another thing I meant to say. Point number one. If when you have a strategy in place and things are not working, you know it. How many of you right now, things are not working in your life and your business and your career, but you don't even know what's not working because you never had a strategy in the first place. You know it's not right. But you don't even know what is not right. So now you're stuck because you don't even know what the problem is, but you know there's a problem. That's not a good place to be. Point number two, topic here today is the power of strategizing. The second thing strategy does is it creates predict predictability, which I just talked about. When you get on a plane, it's predictable. You can tell the person who's picking you up at the airport in Chicago, yo, I'm landing at 11.21 a.m. at Terminal G, Gate 57. Uh, you tell them exactly what's going to happen. You can predict it, and they don't even have to call you because they can't because you're on a plane. They, get know, they know where they got to be, and they know when you're going to get off the plane. They can check for it. If you are not doing that and you can't predict what's happening in your life, with that kind of precision is because you probably don't have a strategy. Again, it doesn't mean you're not smart because you don't have a strategy. So something that I learned in business is that you can predict what your business will do when there's a strategy in place. But when there's not, you kind of like flying by the seat of your pants. Maybe something will happen. Maybe something won't. A wise strategist in competition. And if you ever listen to athletes will say something like a football player might say or a basketball player is almost like even a boxer or any kind of fighter. They'll say something like, it's almost like I could predict what my opponent was going to do. I knew what punches he was about to throw or I knew what the, the safety was going to do in defense. So I knew where to throw the pass or I knew that this guy was about to try to shoot. So I knew I could go block his shot or I knew they were going to go over the screen. So I knew what I could do to get to the basket. It's almost like you can predict what's going to happen when you have the experience. And because of that experience and because of your training, you have mental strategies on how you can deal with what's going to happen. Good strategists are always looking for ways to better predict their outcomes, whereas other people who think they can just go off skill and talent and, I guess, luck, they just think they'll be able to figure it out on the fly. Now, are there times in life you're going to have to figure things out on the fly? Absolutely, yes. But that shouldn't be all the time. Okay? You don't want to leave your life up to happenstance and, look, i got to figure it out now. The next thing that comes up, i got to figure that out. The next thing, i got to figure that out. The problem with that is, number one, eventually you're going to figure wrong. You're going to make the wrong choice, the wrong decision, and you're going to lose. And it's going to cost you time, money, attention, energy. And at other times, you're going to keep doing that. Eventually, you're going to run out of time, money, attention, energy, because every time you come up against something, you got to think of something to do next. All right, there's only so much power that your brain has every single day. You don't want to have to make a decision every single time something comes up. You want it to be streamlined. You want there to be a strategy in place so that you can easily follow it by habit and routine without having to think about it all the time. A good strategist is always doing this. Point number three, topic here today is the power of strategy. When you, are a good, when you have a good strategy, you can diagnose issues and fix problems when something comes up. You can know what the problem is and you can fix it. And not be lost as to what the issue is, which is what happens to a lot of people. A lot of times in life, people will, I'll talk to people, business people, athletes, they'll say something like, this thing is not working for me. Something's not working. And we're trying to figure out what's not working. And their problem is not that something's not working. The problem is they don't know what's not working. They don't even know what the problem is. They say, well, Dre, I'm on the basketball team and I'm not getting in the game. 
And I say, okay, why are you not getting in the game? They say, well, I don't know. I say, well, why don't you know? Have you asked the coach? They say, no, I haven't asked the coach. Well, that would probably be a good place to start because they're the one who controls whether you get in the game or not. If you don't even know what the issue is, you can't fix it. Okay, if you know you have an issue, that's a good thing. But if you don't know what the issue is, you can't do anything about it. And here's what people do wrong. They realize that there's something not working. Usually people can pretty well diagnose when something's not working the way they want it to. Here's what they do wrong. They notice something is wrong and then they start trying to fix random things. Okay, something's not working, so let me do this. Oh, that's not working. All right, let me do this. All right, that didn't do anything. Let me do this. That didn't do anything. Let me do this. Then they'll just do random stuff, hoping that something that they quote unquote fixed changes the whole situation. Y'all all have heard the saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The problem is, if you don't know what's broke and what's working, then you don't know what to fix and what to leave alone. And this is where a lot of people run into brick walls. They start fixing things that are not broken and they start leave, and they leave things alone that actually need to be fixed because they don't know what the problem is. So the basketball player who's not getting in the game, they say, well, I don't know why I'm, getting in, I'm not getting in the game. So they say, all right, Dre, well, I need to work on my ball handling. Maybe that's why I'm not getting in the game. And then they want to work on their jump shot. Then they want to work on their crossovers. Then they want to work on their rebounding. Then they want to work on, I don't know, blocking people's shots. And they do all those things, and they're still not getting in the game. And the problem all along was the coach wasn't putting you in the game because he heard that uh, you weren't showing up to class on Wednesdays. That was the whole reason you weren't getting in the game. But you didn't know that because you didn't find out what the problem was. You did not diagnose the problem. So you've been fixing things that are not even broken. And you used up all that energy, you used up all that time. Now the opportunity is gone because you did not have a strategy in place. When a strategy is in place, ladies and gentlemen, you know everything that is working, how it's supposed to be working at least, and where and when it's supposed to work and what its effects are supposed to be. So when something's not working, you can look at it and see, okay, because of that, I know there's something over here. Now I can diagnose this and this. Example, any of you ever had a, a car have a, a breakdown or it was a sound coming out of your engine that didn't sound quite right? What do you do? You take it to the auto shop. The auto person who's an expert, they understand how cars are supposed to work, at least certain types of cars. They look under the hood of your car. They turn it on. If it doesn't, if it's not starting, they listen to the sound. If it's running and it's sounding funny, they listen for it. They see what's not happening right. They see what's leaking. They see where the issues are. They see where a piece might be missing and they can know strategically, okay, because of the sound that it's making, we know it's not this part or this part. It has to be something in this part right here. And then they can look. All right, now let me see what's going on in this area. There's 10 pieces here. What about this one, this one, this one? This? They know everything that's supposed to be there. So then they can diagnose specifically, okay, the reason that your engine is not working is because you need a new carburetor or the filter's dirty or you haven't changed the oil in three years or something about this part here is not working. You got to change the transmission fluid. They know because they have seen it so many times that they can figure strategically what the issue is when there is an issue. That's why you go to people who are experts. If you want to be an expert at what you do, you must be able to diagnose not only what works, but also when things are not working, you should be able to diagnose it. If you can't do that, that's because you have not yet reached the highest possible levels of proficiency. And I may do a live on that sometime in the future. So when you're focusing on you notice something's not working and you start focusing on things that are not actually the problem, you will actually make it worse. I'll give you another example. If an athlete, you're playing a sport, any sport, and let's say your knee is hurting, your knee's bothering you, so you're like, damn, my right knee is bothering me. So you start doing exercises to strengthen your knee. Now, I've had basketball players ask me, How can I, what can I do to strengthen my knee? So they start doing things to strengthen their knees because their knee was hurting, but the problem is not even your knee. If any of you knows anything about kinesiology, the kinetic chain, if a part of your body is hurting, it's usually not that body part, not usually, sometimes it's not that body part that's, that's bothered, it's another body part that's causing more stress on that one. So if your knee is hurting, it might be because you got a problem in your foot. And because you're overcompensating, well, your right knee's hurting. You're overcompensating on your left foot to take pressure off your right knee. Now it's causing an imbalance in your hips. Now your lower back is imbalanced, but your lower back is compensating for that by putting all the pressure on your right knee. So now your knee is hurting, but the whole problem was your foot was bothering you. But if you didn't know that, if you're not an expert and you can't see that for yourself, and you may not be able to if you're not a, a physical therapist, you're going to be fixing the wrong problem. So what you're going to do by focusing on your knee is actually make it worse. Now you're going to get more injured and more injured, and now you're going to be even a worse player. You're going to be in an even worse situation because you diagnose and fix the wrong problem. This is the, this is the skill and the value of strategy. And I want you all to understand as a disclaimer, you do not have to be an expert in all of these things. All you have to do is know the people who are and know what questions to ask. If you ask the wrong questions or the wrong people, you're going to get the wrong answers. Point number four. Topic here today is the power of strategy. 
This is the last one. You get tactical flexibility. What is tactical flexibility? That is your ability to change on the fly what you're going to do and how you do it based on the given circumstances of the situation. Meaning, once you have a strategy in place, you got this long term strategy for the next 30 days or the next three years or the next 10 years and you start implementing your strategy. We all know that we can't predict what's going to what the world's going to be like a year from now. Nobody predicted COVID. Nobody can predict uh, what's going to be happening politically a year and a half from now. We don't know. But you can make a strategy that has a framework so that no matter what happens, you have options of what you can do. OK, so if this happens, we can do this, this or this. If that happens, we can do this and this. If that happens, we can do that. When COVID hit, for example, many of us who like to go to the gym, you couldn't go to the gym for a good amount of time, depending on where you live. Maybe you still can't go to the gym because the gyms are closed. You couldn't do anything about it. You did not. You probably couldn't have predicted that. And it's not your fault, but you still need to work out. So what are your what are your contingency plans? How can you work out? Can you work out at home? Are you going to go work out in the park? Are you going to make some makeshift gym equipment in your house? What are you going to do? Because you still need to work out whether the gym is open or not. What is, what is your tactical flexibility in that situation? Can you change tactics as necessary through your strategy? When you have a strategy, the answer will always be yes. When you are a tactician, all you're doing is reacting. Reacting is the difference between reacting and responding. Reacting is when something comes up, you figure out what to do, you do it. Then something else comes up, you figure out what to do, you do it. That is exhausting, it is time consuming, and is an inexact science. There will be times that you try to come up with a tactic and it won't work. It will cost you time, it will cost you energy, it will probably cost you money, and it will cost you lost opportunity that you don't even know about because you were focused on doing your tactic. When you have a strategy and something doesn't go the way you want it, it may surprise you just as well, but because you knew that something like this might come up, now you have contingency plans. You got five other ways that you can get this done. All right, I can't do it that way. All right, I'll do it this way, this way, this way. All right, my, my email is not working. How am I going to get my message out to people? Maybe I'll make a video. Maybe I'll do a live stream. Maybe I'll send everybody a text because I got their phone numbers. Maybe I'll send some snail mail because I got everybody's address. Having different ways of getting the same thing done when something is not working. You have to have these strategies or contingencies in place and contingencies are only put in place when a strategy is implemented. If all you're doing is tactical, you will not have these and you'll just have to figure things out on the fly. And again, you will run out of talent. All right, nobody's talented enough to always come up with a new strategy every single time that is always working. When you have a strategy, you have other options when the first choice is unavailable. When you're tactical, you're stuck when your first option is unavailable. For example, when I do these lives every day, the strategy is what? What is the strategy here? The strategy is I'm giving you something from within the work on your game philosophy. It's a different subject every single day. One day I might talk about Trump versus Biden. Next day I might talk about something basketball related. The next day it might be about uh, Black Lives Matter and All Lives Matter. The next day it might be some evergreen topic about strategizing. The next day it might be something about business. The next day it could be something about discipline or confidence. It's different topics every single day. I don't always know what the topic is gonna be. Because if something, some major news happens tonight, then I might talk about it tomorrow, but I might not. But the overall strategy is I'm always going to whatever I talk about, I'm always going to bring it back to something within the work on your game philosophy. And now I can talk about these books I got here and I can just explain, hey, this is what I do. This is what I talk about. And those of you who have followed any of these, you all know the topic is always different, but I'm always bringing it back to the same thing. Something within this whole philosophy that you can use no matter what you do. So sometimes the current event, sometimes it's evergreen content, but I'm always relating it back to a main theme. The main theme of working your game is the strategy itself. A tactic would be that I'm doing a live stream on Instagram and Facebook, but the tactic could change. What if Instagram lives go away? Maybe I'll do it on Periscope. Then maybe I'll do it on YouTube. Maybe I'll stop doing lives and I'll just record a video every day and just upload it regularly to Facebook or YouTube or IGTV. Who knows? I don't control that. The tactics can change, but the strategy is always the same. I'm going to create something that's part of this philosophy that I'm going to share with the world and whoever wants it is going to get it. You'll see how that works. All that being said, let me tell you about this book I got in front of me here. I'm going to recap my points. And if anyone has a question on anything that I just said, go ahead and post it right now. Make sure it's to the point and make sure it's related to the topic. This book right here is called The Mirror of Motivation, Self-Guide to Self-Discipline. I made this book free for everybody to get it as the first book of mine that you read. Now, you can get this at mirrorofmotivation.com. The book's free. All you do is cover the shipping. But let me tell you why you want this book. I've written 27 books. If you didn't know, I said that at the top. And often people would ask me, well, Dre, you got all these books. I like your stuff, but which book do I read first? You got so many books. Is there an order? Is there a sequence? Is there some kind of process? 
before I did not have a strategy. Y'all see how this goes? I didn't have a strategy. I say, well, get anyone you want. That was a bad answer. And usually when I said that to people, they bought nothing because it was too confusing where to start. So now I'm making it easy. You start with this book right here. Why do you start with this book? Because the work on your game philosophy is four principles, discipline, confidence, mental toughness, personal initiative. So everything that I write about, I got one book on each one of those topics. I got one book that covers all of them. I'll tell you about this in a minute. And this is the book on discipline. This is the first concept, discipline, showing up every day to do the work. Why would you want a book that's about the self-guide, the self-discipline? Because some of y'all might be like, discipline is boring, it's hard, I don't feel like it. Why would I want a book about discipline? I'm going to tell you why, because this book is about more than that. Everyone listening to me right now, you have goals. You have things that you wish to achieve in your life that you have not yet accomplished. We all do. And since you're listening to a guy who has work on your game on your shirt, you probably understand you got to do some work, right? You know you can't get something for nothing. This is not like Aladdin where the genie just grants you three wishes. You got to do some work. Question that many people never ask, though. Everybody asks, what do I want and what do I have to do? How, how hard do I have to work? Most people ask those questions if you have any type of common sense. But many people never ask themselves, who do I need to be? What type of person do I need to be in order to take these actions and get these results? Because somebody listening to me right now, I guarantee you, you are doing all the right things right now in your life, yet you are still not getting a result. And you are wondering what the hell the problem is. Even though you're doing everything right, you're still not getting the outcome. I'm gonna tell you what the problem is. Part of the strategy, you have never asked yourself, who do I need to be? Your strategy is not complete because you didn't ask yourself the critical third question. Who do I need to be? When you ask this question, how do I need to approach life? How do I need to see myself in the mirror? What kind of energy do I need to have? When you answer that question and you start implementing the answer, the same actions that you were taking three weeks ago are now gonna produce a completely different set of results. That's what this book is about. And that's why it's called the mirror of motivation. This is not me motivating you. This is me showing you how to be the type of person you need to be by your definition so that you can do that, get the results that you want, and then you can do it over and over and over again. That's the framework of this book. So you can get the book for free. As I already told you, I already paid for the book. I got a stack of these books. I got a bunch of them coming, I believe, early next week. Another stack coming. Books covered. You pay for the shipping. Mirrorofmotivation.com. Mirrorofmotivation.com. This book right here is my book, Work On Your Game. After you put in your info to get your free copy of this, on the next page, you're going to make your offer to get this and another one of my books called The Mental Workbook, which is your strategy for laying out who you need to be. So we give you a workbook that will let you lay out on paper. You write in the book your strategy for who you need to be, what you're going to do, how you're going to see yourself, all of that. That's in The Mental Workbook. And you'll get this book. That's a bundle that you get on the next page. But again, just focus on this. Mirrorofmotivation.com. We'll walk you through the rest. It's all automated, so you don't even have to worry about what I just said. Just know that that's the next page. All that being said, let me recap these points very quickly. And if there's a question, I will address it. The topic is the power of strategy. Definition of strategy is a plan of action or policy designed to achieve a major or overall aim. Number one, lets you see your finish line and lets you see the bridge between where you are now and where you want to go. Number two, strategy creates predictability. If you cannot predict where you are going or you have no clue what's going to happen next, you become a tactician. And it's hard to be a tactician because eventually you want to make a mistake. Point number three, you can fix and diagnose, diagnose and fix a specific problem and not to be lost as to what the issue is, fixing the wrong things, which is what a lot of people do. Something goes wrong, they start fixing something that doesn't even need to be fixed. They ignore the thing that needs to be fixed and they make the problem worse because they don't know what they're looking at. They don't even know what they're looking for. And point number four, tactical flexibility when you have a strategy. When you are without a strategy, your format is all tactics, meaning everything you do, you got to decide in the moment what to do. Problem is that's exhausting, it's time consuming, and eventually you're going to make a mistake, which is going to cost you even more time and even more energy. When you have a strategy, you can change your tactics as necessary, but you have contingency plans in place, knowing that everything's not going to work out perfectly. Unlike the tactician who thinks every tactic they come up with is the last decision they'll ever have to make, which is absolutely not true. All that said, again, mirrormotivation.com, the book's already covered. I don't know if we have any questions, but if there is, I will see them right now. And Extraordinary People 17, what's going on? Ice Juro said, preparing for battle, plans are useless, but planning is indispensable. That's right. That's a good quote, Dwight Eisenhower. Trade on purpose says, be, do, and have. That is right, and I cover that also in this book, Work On Your Game. So this is the book where I took my whole philosophy and per the request of the publisher, condense it down to 250 pages. That's this book right here. So if you want the overall work on your game philosophy, 
It's in this book right here that we talk business, we talk sports, I talk how I took that mindset to make it as a pro athlete and how that applies to business and life. Because I'm not, I don't play sports anymore. I'm a full-time CEO of my company, Work On Your Game Incorporated. How we use these tools at work every single day. So even if you don't play ball, even if you do, eventually you're going to be done playing ball. You're going to need these for life. You get this in this book, Work On Your Game. Again, when you go to mirrormotivation.com, on the very next page, after you put in your info for this, on the next page, you're going to get an offer to get this and another book in a bundle. We call it the Mental Game Advanced Bundle. Again, mirrorofmotivation.com. All that said, ladies and gentlemen, I do these lives every single day. I don't know what the topic is going to be every day. I choose it in the moment. Sometimes I know it ahead of time. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes it's current events. Sometimes it's not. Y'all just stay tuned because every day is going to be something that's going to make you better. It's going to make you smarter. It's going to open your mind. It's going to challenge you to improve in some way, shape, or form. We call that personal development. That's what I do for a living. That's how I got here. And that's how we're going to get to where we are all going. So everybody, work on your game. We'll be live again tomorrow. Appreciate your time. We out of here. Dre all day.